Today we have a 2005 Mazda 3 that needs struts and shocks. The car's in the air safely and I'm gonna put a jack stand under it. Right under this frame piece. Next I'll take off the wheel. For this video I used a 3 8 inch socket, 14 millimeter impact and regular, 15 millimeter, 17 millimeter, 13 16 for the lugs, an adjustable wrench, a 14 millimeter end wrench. I have a ratcheting end wrench which is nice. I use the BFH which happens on all suspension. Little hammer, needle nose pliers, regular pliers, rat tail file, and a flat bladed screwdriver. I also used a large floor jack and a small floor jack. You can use the one that came with the car in place of this one if you don't have two floor jacks and uh, the safety stand, the jack stand, of course, to keep the car safe. 13 sixteenths is the tightest fit for this. I always throw a tire under the car just for extra safety. Here's what we're looking at. To remove this strut, we're gonna go ahead and remove the sway bar in link bolt. And then there is a brake line clip here. This keeps the brake line safe and secure and away from moving parts. So we're gonna remove that clip. Then there's a bolt right here that tightens the strut to the hub spindle. It threads in the other side here and tightens it. Then at top we have three bolts here. So let's get to it. I ended up tapping it out the back with a just with a screwdriver in my hand. Couldn't show it on film. But that just moved it out and I pulled it with the needle nose pliers. Push it down. Now the brake line's free. It's time to take out the sway bar end links. This is a 15 millimeter nut. You'll notice I have an adjustable wrench on the back here. If you want to see why I need that, um, if I just hit this with an impact or a socket, it's just going to spin. This will hold in place so it can break loose. If you look at the lower sway bar end link, you'll see there's a flat side here and then on the opposite side and that gives you a place to grab on with that wrench. It's kind of hard to see but it's there. That'll save you a lot of time and pain. Ah! Now I'm going to use a 17 millimeter on this lower strut retaining bolt. Notice I've soaked everything with penetrating oil so hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier. All right, the tension is now taken off this bottom. It's probably rusted in there, so I'm gonna probably give it a bonk with a hammer. There we go. All right, I have some separation there, so the rust, the rust bond is broken. Now we'll go to the top of the strut and take out the three bolts there. These are 14 millimeter bolts up here. Once you take the top bolts out, this whole assembly is free to move up and down. So, go ahead and give it a few hits. And you see it's almost free. So I just pushed down on this and tapped with a hammer some more. 
Now this assembly is hanging free, so you don't want your brake line to get under tension. The sway bar end link, I can move it now, safely pull it out of this hole, and we are out. Let's look at what we're putting in today. Ooh, they're blue. All right, here's a strut. You'll notice the lower here, there's a bolt that goes through here, and this is tightened into the knuckle. Here's the brake hose retainer to keep it out of the way, out of the axles and such. Here's the sway bar end link portion. We know this is the driver's side because the brake hose is on the front of the strut. And then here's the top. This is a full assembly, it's nice, you don't have to compress a spring, and this car has 240,000 miles on it. I would not want the stock spring in there anyway. Reassembly is gonna be similar. I'm gonna put the strut in this way, top that way, get the bolts out of course. Then I'm gonna put the sway bar end link in and then shove everything in. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna orient these struts the same and I'm gonna make sure these top holes are in the same position. You can turn this with your hand. I want them in the same position as what came out of the car. If they're not, then it's not gonna work out very well. You can see that there's this longer curved part of the triangle here. So I'm gonna make sure these line up. All right, I'm gonna put the top of the strut in first and put a couple of bolts in to hold it where it should go. And then I will get the bottom in. Now to press the strut into the knuckle, I just used another floor jack and I pushed the knuckle upward against the strut and it popped right into place. It was really easy, I swear, and that was the piece of film that I don't have and it's the one that you probably really wanna see, but I swear it's easy. Just take your left hand, hold the strut, and then press up with the jack. Now tap your brake line clip back in. I just use a small hammer. Now you can install your sway bar in link. Remember to use your adjustable wrench or you could use vice grips here and tighten this thing down. Quick note here, um, these came with new bolts but they're way short and they don't have a washer. I don't trust them as much as I do the OEM bolts so I'm going to go ahead and reuse these OEM bolts that have a built on washer and they're much longer so I'm gonna get lots of threads in there. This was a pretty easy job. The last step is simply just throwing your wheels back on the car, torquing them down to the specifications. Um, I think I did 90 foot-pounds on this one. If you have any questions about this job, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Hopefully I can fill those in. I'm going to try to make sure all information is uh, in the summary on the video as well. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.